Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to I League Season 3. We're now down to Game 3 and possibly Match Point. Well, it is Match Point and possibly the last game for this evening. We have LGD versus VG. Director 8 has led his team to a 2-0 lead over VG Gaming. Quite this spectacular feat here, as my friend Blaze would tell you. Okay. Most definitely, man. I, I really feel that Vici Gaming have a lot to consider over these next uh, few games. Being on match point, knowing that every single game could be their last, they have to really give it their all. We've seen from some of these players the reverse all kill happen, but uh, no lunch break, no time <laughs> to really think about uh, the, the redraft or the way to look at it differently. They're just going to have to kind of draft on the fly, change up their style, and see what they can bring to bear against Xiao 8 who just seems to have figured out uh, the really good timings where they can be at the maximum tempo and actually taking a, uh, a leaf out of Vici Gaming's book as they pick up an opener that uh, generally speaking would go this side of Vici. How a gyrocopter, Isis Clockwork, not so much. It's going to be in LGD's hands but I think the first phase ban is probably the most interesting thing here. Um, Vici Gaming banned out the Storm Spirit. We're looking to pick up Shadowfiend first phase. That negates maybe his two core heroes. But LGD just say, screw it, ban out the Shadow Fiends. They know they're going to pick that up anyways and take that option off the table, leaving Darkseer in the pool for the first pick. So in this case, uh, maybe he's going to be showing his flexibility, going to show us a little bit more of his versatility like we saw in the Magnus, and I'm excited for it. I mean, there's so much that could be brought to bear with these uh, the Clockwork Gyrocopter opener. They have a lot of different ways they can go from here. Yeah, certainly. Uh, max, the max strat opening again. Uh, we have Clockwork that is going to be good against Darkseer. And the most important thing is uh, Vici banned the Rubik themselves. So Clockwork doesn't have that hard counter to him uh, removed from the game. It's a really good support against him for the reasons we stated the last game. Uh, being able to throw the Clockwork out of the cogs is great defensively as well as offensively. Prevent well, you could even trap him with his own cogs Ten if you will. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, but the Shadow Demon could do that too. Like the Shadow Demon did get banned out phase one in game two and now it's going to be in the hands of most likely Fenrir. He definitely plays the Shadow Demon more frequently. Mm -hmm. And I think Disruption works a similar way. Not the exact same obviously, but you follow it up with the Lena or Lush Rack and I think that Vici Gaming are going to have a much better laning stage. Yeah, uh, Lina is a very possible thing here. If it, uh, I mean, Vici are on game a uh, match point. Do they go something outlandish? Do they go Marana? Maybe you know. Mm, I mean, Marana's not thing. bad, definitely. Uh, FY Marana, obviously, he's shown what he can do with it. So I think that that is definitely an option. But I think the the Lina just brings a little bit more. You get the Laguna Blade against the Gyrocopter before he has BKB. He just becomes so squishy. And uh, you can dominate the Clockwork just as well with Light Strike Ray as you can with Arrow. So I think that uh, I am pretty confident in the Lina pick if they get that through Phase 2. But I'm, obviously they have three options if you consider the Marana and the Leshrac as well. They they just go ahead and say screw it. There's so many supports that could combo up with the Shadow Demon. We're just going to focus on the other lane, and that's going to be the mid lane. Banning out Super's Dragonite, making sure they don't get like the vacuum into the Elder Blue Dragon form mm -hmm. domination. Yeah. That uh, is so yeah, scary. In just the want game. to make sure that um, Super is out of his comfort zone. Uh, banning his remaining. favorite heroes, the most stable ones, and uh, make him play something that he's not Five used to. So, whereas maybe uh, he has shown that he can play a lot of heroes. Yeah. And this mid matchup is going to be very unorthodox because usually you just see the typical lane dominating mids who just try to pull forward and farm and if they fail they can just go back and st farm the stacked up jungle. But in this case we're going to be seeing a completely different set of heroes. Might see like a Templar Assassin come into play. The, the Soul Catcher plus Meld Strike Burst uh, allows you to pretty much kill off anybody and the Surge allows you to maneuver pretty effectively. So I think maybe you could look at that but it's yeah, not like, super signature. Uh, I mean, it's not. I mean, again, it's not. It's not Super's major pickup. Like that's not something that he generally runs. And with the Queen of Pain banned out as well, it, it's going to be I'm unorthodox heroes. And I'm just trying to think of who can really maximize on what's being offered here. Obviously, AOE is a big factor. They could go for the Wex Invoker again. Ooh, wow. Okay. And Lena pick Lush. Yeah, mm. that's a good one as well. It's a block pick. Uh, here, the two good combos with Shadow Demon, of course, uh, Lena and Lash. It's you now pick up the Lash for yourself, it's a good uh, supporting hero, it could be a mid as well, mid less track with max lightning storm is very powerful because of the lightning storm buff, it allows you to perfectly chain split off uh, to lightning storm now. Because uh, the slow time has been increased to 1 second at level 4, so it's more than enough time to chain a good split off. So it has uh, potential for solo kills as well. 
Yeah, I think you have to go Invoker now. I think the EMP is too important here uh, in order to kind of set things up. So we might see a similar mm -hmm. draft from PC Gaming to what we saw in game one, and we'll see the completely different draft of LGD, how it responds to it. So I, I think the Invoker is very important. Probably a fourth pick, since you're not really afraid of LGD picking it up, but I think they should pick it up before it gets a chance oh. to be banned. But okay. Interesting, interesting decision here. I mean, obviously, Drunken Haze is amazing against Gyrocopter. I've talked about this mechanic a lot, but Flat Cannon makes it so that Drunken Haze almost applies twofold to Gyrocopter's secondary targets. He'll obviously have a chance to miss his first target, but if he misses that attack, the Flat Cannon won't even trigger. And if he hits that attack, the Flat Cannon has a chance to miss anyway. So Drunken Haze really good against Gyrocopter, and if they feel like it's got, what's going to put them in the game, between the Wall of Replica and the Primal Split, you've got a lot of teamfight potential with the ulties up. I want to see some physical damage coming up for VG, because right now they have their magical threat, which is the Brewmaster. Uh, heroes are definitely going to try and opt for that BKB, otherwise they get punished heavily by the Bruce Split. So some really unignorable physical damage would be great here, uh, mm -hmm. or BKB piercing at least. Uh, I'm thinking along the lines of, uh, uh, like you said, that Templar Assassin could really be a big factor now. Yeah, just go for that physical burst. I'm trying to think of something else. Maybe a faceless void, but it won't go well with your Dark Seer and Shadow Demon. It just doesn't feel nah. right. Yeah. Um, I don't know, what other physical hot carries? Juggernaut's fine, Ju yeah, if Juggernaut. wants to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do, you, do you see a Sven working? Uh, I mean, if you really want to put a, a lot into that AoE Wombo combo, Isozai's performance in Game 1 wasn't amazing, but we have seen him kind of be the playmaker, so in, in other situations. I would say that it's definitely an option, but they might just want to consider going for something like uh, uh that's just more single target focused i mean we're talking about the gyrocopter matchup mm. and if you can just single out him out with like a juggernaut or uh, it's hard to say a pl wouldn't be bad necessarily um it's just there's so many heroes that are viable in this patch i mean obviously a lot of 6.83 heroes would fill in here but with them being nerfed out you want something with magic community you want something with single target focus i don't see why they wouldn't go the juggernaut yeah, um, FY Mirana could be a possibility here, but the Sand King mm -hmm. uh, pickup, I think, is just yeah. great. Ah, there, there we go! go. <laughs> right, FY Mirana. Uh, it's uh, it's one of a kind. There's a support Mirana. Uh, unlike Sing Sing's core Mirana, I think very few people play Mirana. Um, but um, Mirana is certainly going to be a key factor in this game if you land those beautiful arrows. Now, now the, the question is who to follow up Five with that Mirana remaining. pick. You know, uh, yeah. we have SD Mirana. Do we go something else? You know, they ban Spectre. Dying they think that VG are going late game. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to see something. For late game, you have a lot yeah. of options. I mean, if you're looking at late game here, you can you can go for uh, things like the Morphling. How has a legendary Morphling? A little slow tempo, but it's still really good against the stuns Ten that are presented here, like the Burrow Strike and the. Splitter that you can still morph during that. Mm -hmm. So Morphling could be really good. Weaver is really good at maneuvering against these heroes because he's so quick. Um, yeah, I mean, you could even see something like... Uh, I, mean, I wouldn't say anti-mage necessarily, but... Yeah, anti-mage. Nah, I, I don't see why not, possible, actually. It's um, possible if the Lash, Lash is run as a core, your anti-mage yeah. could be strong. Vacuum Mana Void, pretty solid. Obviously, you get the great landing phase from Shadow Demon Marana. AM Juggernaut are probably my top two here. Yeah, because AM can blink forward, so he doesn't uh, in, you know, he doesn't need to have to walk up uh, prior to a gank. And I like this Beastmaster. It does look like you want to get something elusive here. So uh, anti mage would be great because uh, it really relies on the Sand King to get a bar strike off only a uh, mm -hmm. uh, bar strike off and Shadow Five Demon anti mage. Remaining. Good stuff. Yeah, the anti mage Pretty would be solid. good here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not uh, like Ooh, you were talking. So you were talking about Matt's so. community. He obviously doesn't get mana break against a immune target, so it's not ideal. But I think it's still a really good pick. So we'll see what they end up going with here. They're up against a bristleback, which is a pretty tough last pick to Lanza. deal with here. Uh, I, I don't mind peel definitely. I mean, the band of burn is going to be really solid. The landing phase is going to be perfectly fine. Not ill either. Yeah, it's the illusions aren't going to be a, a prime factor here, and it's going to be a, like have to be insane doppelgangers in order to get out of a tough spot. So, yeah, not sold on any one Five pick. Vichy Gaming remain. could go a lot of different ways with this. I think no matter what you pick, we're still going to be looking at the four other heroes for mm -hmm. the first twenty minutes. Like how we'll be involved, spirit lancing every once in a while. But for the most part, it's going to be the rotations of the Shadow Demon, the Marana, the progression of the Brewmaster. 
and eventually Ice Ice Ice. That's going to be kind of my order of operations for how the tempo of this game sets, and then based on that, how it can farm more or fight more, and we'll be seeing him come into the mid game pretty strong. All right, so uh, Marana uh, really has to put in a lot of work uh, this game. The Phantom Lancer is going to have a really uphill task for him to uh, to complete, and we might even see a 3-0 if things don't go well in the early game. I think a snowball here from VG would be close to impossible to stop for uh, from LGD would be impossible for VG to stop because they don't have any wave clear, and uh, LGD have less track, so. It could end really fast, or they have one of those 50-minute um, stall fests again, uh, with some really insane plays from Ice Ice Ice. We'll have to see. It'd be a yeah, shame if it was a 3-0. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want the, get the match to go the distance, so there's there's part of me that will root for Vici just based on that fact alone, but if LGD 3-0, it's a huge statement of their potential, and yeah. as well, I, I feel that Xiao White almost has deserved it. These two first two games were so amazing. That I gotta say that if they 3-0, then I'll be happy just based on the fact that I not only is Vici uh, shown that they can be dethroned, but also that Jiao Eight really like the where where how far he's come in so short a time with this team. Yeah. Like obviously he he's the TI champion. He did a lot of work with Newbie, but he eventually parted ways and found a, a kind of a band of misfits a little bit here. I mean obviously still major players in the Chinese scene, oh. uh, but. It was still kind of a hodgepodge from a lot of different teams brought together under the LGD banner, and I think he's done a lot of um, tremendous work with them. The w how far they've come in so little time. Yeah, the director as a uh, TI champ needs uh, wants to go more for that Volvo money. So we'll see. The thirst is real. He really wants that. He'll be the first one to get another TI win if he wins this one. No one mm -hmm. has won TI twice. Uh, it might be a curse. We'll see if he does do it this time round. LGD. Uh, Direct eight. He has uh, he has a way with things, and it might be all the game, the in-game calls. It's not so much the excellent drafting. It's more like the uh, the good calls that he makes in games that uh, really make the difference. Yeah, just kind of focusing their movement. Obviously, they coordinate a lot of big engagements throughout these uh, two past two games. They're gonna be looking for a lot of key skirmishes here in this third one. Because I mean, in general, with Super being the shot caller for Vici Gaming inside the game. He's going to be timing things around his cooldowns. He's going to be looking for uh, fights when he has blink, when he has splits. But it's where LGD fights when the, those options aren't available that really makes a difference. Otherwise, yeah, just looking at the Shadow Demon and the Marana, where they move on the map. And right now, FY, he's Hit looking for an back. opening onto the mid lane with that first yeah. Sacred Arrow. Trading. Of course, it's not as strong on the Dire I think side. It's not a good I, time. Okay, no, never mind. Go on. Yeah, it, it's like in on the di on the radiant side you get to kind of okay we're gonna see the arrow come through and will not connect. But on the radiant side you get this entire space to the southeast mm -hmm. of the mid lane oh, that you can play with. Oh wow! Oops, should have looked at ice 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 because he always does this. But yeah, all right. Yeah, I mean it's boost for sinking, but I mean it's just uh, essentially ice 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 going in just a little bit too far despite being able to iron shell under tower. His positioning just wasn't on point there, and it's just a simply the burrow strike connects. If the burrow strike connects then you chain it up with all the damage you need to bring him down, so... Uh, yeah, unfortunate, but... I've, I think it's still all eyes on FY. I, he's rotating around around mm -hmm. this ancient group very... in an interesting manner. There's a lot of different angles that you can still attack from the dire side. Like, we saw the one from the high ground near the ancients. There's one actually further south that goes right over the tree line, and you can't see it until the arrow's pretty much at you. And then, obviously, he was stalking up over by the secret shop for the top lane as well, so... Depending on your intel, and it looks like FY's going for that secondary position, but it's going to be scouted out by the clockwork here. He walks into it! Oh! oh. I'm not even sure they can kill the Bristleback, though, with a full duration arrow. Because uh, Brewmaster, yeah, he does quite a bit of damage, but it's not the bursty hero that you you, you, well, you want to have with that. Okay, no mana to follow up with an arrow, though, but that's going to be a clap. It will do some damage. Pick up the Invis rune, the Bristleback! Bristle back. Okay, the body blocking him with the invis. Well done here. Will be first blood. No, a second blood. Just kidding. Uh, one more right click. We'll do the job. And FY, uh, great body block from him. We'll pop out invis just in time. But they nearly lose their entire life. And now he'll suicide to the neutrals. So. so it's actually interesting. The the clockwork is going for your standard offlane build, which is uh, the power cogs and the rocket flare. If Yao actually had a point in battery assault there or saved the skill point, and then had the battery assault skilled up, he would have just straight up killed the Marana. He had a 65 movement speed advantage over her, and mm -hmm. she didn't have leap because she's only level one. 
So Yao finding her out uh, in the jungle there would have been a huge opportunity for Yao. Just to kind of cement their advantage, and Bristleback would have had no reason to be there. But as it stands, that he gets caught out, he gets disrupted, and they they punish him pretty heavily. That was a really good movement from Beachy Gaming. Resetting now, kind of getting their HP back up. Afinra will go for a stack, which looks like it will succeed, and the top lane will be back under control momentarily. Yeah. Uh... The PL has been uh, holding his own against the uh, clock, has gone for magic wand right off the bat, upgrading that stick into it because uh, of the constant spell spam from the clockwork, so getting some value early on. And he's got the 19 last hits to the clockwork's uh, 8, and that those rotations like you said has given Ice, uh, Yao the space to get his levels, he's now nearly level 4 as well, so that's really good for him. Yeah, Ice Ice has to jungle it up though. He's able to clear out the mud golems thanks to the shift change from magic immunity to magic resistance. Great. And he will get himself to level two, which is what he needs uh, with the the surge to actually avoid that sinking gank in the future. But they're actually just going to go for a push play here. No diabolic edict, unfortunately. MMY is just a little bit experience short to get a, a skill point in that. But double iron shell comes through, and uh, the sandstorm is not going to do much here. Yeah. All right. So the brewmaster is going to. Uh, not gonna go for the rune here. Uh, FY will fire the arrow. It will land onto the bristle back. Nice haste snatch, actually. That's really good. That would have been huge for maybe to get a haste rune on the bristle back. Snap the courier. Snap the courier. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Greedy would have been really greedy. But oh, oh wait, are they gonna nice go for first right here? Oh, oh my! Wow. Close call. But now they have the T rotation. Arrow. The arrow coming in. FY Sila. Sila to fall. Oh boy. AFKs, Jeez. and yeah, it's better if not gonna land, FY. Just, it just takes one arrow, man. It just takes one arrow to change the scope of the early game, and that death for Silar just puts him so much further behind. They, they were getting good farm on him, good tower damage in, that tower is down to 230 HP, but it's all for naught if he falls there, and now we see Phantom Lancer pulling ahead, and gonna be pushing uh, on his own up top, where Isis, or, or sorry, Yao can't really deal with it, just with level, two levels in Rocket Flare. Huh? Meanwhile, how is uh, left to his own devices? He's gonna be happy about this. And with enough levels, he can kill this clockwork very easily. If he gets close to the clockwork and the clockwork doesn't pop cogs in time, he's dead. But he needs treads, I think. Uh, to do some serious damage, you need Aquila treads, and then you can do some really crazy tower diving uh, with just a PL alone. Uh, but he has to be wary of any kind of TP uh, reaction here. And Xiao 8, oh boy, this looks delicious. He gets the Observer Ward down so he knows if the Darkseer is coming in to steal experience or to Iron Shell and try to steal some creeps directly. And he's just going to go ahead and sandstorm this down. They are going to make the, the play happen, but it might be a little bit too late. We'll see what they see as they march up. They're blind right now going in, but they will see the smoke pop momentarily. It seems like it might be too late, but they do get a lot of this experience. A quarter of the experience from all the small creeps, and now they're going to go for a Ooh, Yowie directly. Oh, the save! But it might but not be enough. Position. He traps himself! And, uh, he traps himself! Oh no. Oh no! Vec? Is there a Vec? No, there's no Vec. He was gonna Iron Shell and stand next to him. Uh, bye, shall we? This is a bad way to die. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Death by hugging. Ice, ice, ice. Gives him the death hug. Oh, super! Surge forward. Oh no, not gonna happen. It's a level 1 surge. Level 2 surge. So the end result of that is that Xiao Wei claims 12 last hits. But the experience is broken four ways against him, so he's only getting a quarter of that experience, and then he ends up dying. He really isn't much closer to his Blink Dagger, and he didn't even get to level four off of that huge stack. So, good move of Avicii to find that op opportunity and it's make the most of it. It's about the timing, I think. It's a very clever rotation. Because, you know, if you play in a pub, you will not know when the Sand King, most pub players will not know where the Sand King uh, would be farming the stacks. But Avicii, they know exactly. It's like they have um, a third eye. Uh, knowing Ooh. when he will be Oh, actually, it. surging in for the disruption here. Siler gets the rocket barrage off, but it is cancelled out by the best. They'll just arrow from the flank. Great play, and another huge kill against the gyrocopter. That is just so critical. Looks Finding like this kind of uh, desert ambushes where they pop out from the sand, just firing from the direction you don't expect it to. Yeah. yeah, but the big thing for Vici Gaming there is just checking the scoreboard. You check the scoreboard, you see the levels, and you see that there is a level 3 Sand King, you know he's going 2 points in Sandstorm, and you know that they've been uh, able to m move off the lane from Ice 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 enough that they've been able to stack. So it's just one of two camps, they go for the, the central camp, obviously there's the western camp too, and uh, they get lucky in the first shot. So it's, it's good awareness in general, but obviously that intel is available for them if you just check the scoreboard. Yeah. Well, he's super brewmaster has not got a chance to use his ultimate yet, and I don't think he will be able to kill the bristleback, uh, even with a clap start. So, 
It would be tough. Uh, putting that Bristle back in the middle lane was a pretty clever idea because the Brewmaster has uh, almost zero chance to kill them solo. Mm -hmm. So maybe doing what he can so far, but and you know, getting a second individual in could change that quite a bit. Um, yeah, will be stacking up for him as well. So uh, we're gonna see maybe actually boost up his farm quite quickly. What do you think he goes if he jumps up to you know fifteen hundred net worth after uh, ancient camp is cleared out? I think just Vanguard to deal with PL illusions. Mm -hmm. It's a standard build. He might even upgrade the Crimson Guard because that item is just specifically awesome against a Phantom Lancer. 50 damage yep. reduction to all the illusions, it almost turns them to kittens. It pretty much yeah, turns you also them. are up against Wall of Replica and Primal Split. Mm -hmm. All of this is blocked. Like, that actually Crimson Guard sounds like a perfect item this game. Oh, MMY, Dead Man. Dead Man walking on uh, four uh, legs. Clap. Have some brew. Down he goes. He even gets a split of off. I don't know how. But Vici will score a freebie over there. And Yao, gonna pop into that invis state. Oh, they might find him. Alright, he knows. He's not that dumb, right? Yeah, no, he'll, he'll know, of course. And uh, they'll consider the fact that now these camps are being blocked off so they can't stack them for the Sand King. Oh, okay. but uh, he's, he's the Sand King. There is Yao. There is Yao to make the plays. And Fenrir, oh, he's Fenrir, now. Goodbye. Okay. Is there a follow up? Nah, there's no follow up. He's gonna disrupt to buy some time, but Silo's gonna be here to get that EXP, and they might fight this. Yao is stunned for five seconds. The Power Strike will come, and it could be a clap. Oh, no, no clap. They're gonna be surrounded here. They have to be careful. Surge out the Brewmaster would be your play here. Never mind, here we go. Primal split. Silo to fall. Is he gonna get fall though? No, Yao, perfect cogs here, but the Phantom Lancer, he hops through all of that. He says, balance. But the Power Strike will come, and how will get Sandstormed up. There's a lot of damage here. They spin the Bristle back. That's one of the things about Brewmaster. Spin the Bristle back, ignore him, pick him up for later, save him for lunch. Super, getting caught up on FY with the arrow from the side and a clap across. Super will take that kill. Sila still chasing down his Brewmaster. Does he have a blink? He looks like he's in Dead Man's Land, and how? What are you doing? That's not your base, and Double Gang. Nope, two heroes lost. And that uh, that turned out to be really bad, actually. Two calls and a Mirana lost for just the Sand King and a Clockwork. Yeah, unfortunate commitment. The big thing is the trees. The fact that the Gyrocopter was able to get through that tree line, instead of having to go for the southern path, he's able to just kind of uh, jump to the side and is able to uh, run out of that fight so much easier. Uh, I believe Hal's last maneuver there was uh, actually trying to prevent them from getting the AoE gold bounty. If he dies under tower, with them not nearby, mm -hmm. they get a lot less value from that kill. But as it is, he doesn't die quickly enough, and he does just uh, end up losing oh, everything. Now Fenrir is caught out a second Deja time, vu. the second hook in the row, perfectly on top, and it doesn't matter what you bring in to bear against him. Fenrir is going down. Oh what? Nope, nope. You're kid. You nope. You're wrong. <laughs> he's gotta die. Yeah, he's right? gotta die. He's gotta die. No, <laughs> he does not. <laughs> stick charges, man. Uh, uh, that item Jeez. is really good for supports. Buy a stick, Jeez. save a life, man. Don't it listen is, to Envy and dropping that stick. It's not going to do you any good. Mm -hmm. I mean, stick, Magic Wand's the end that got buffed a couple of times. Magic Stick is still the, the efficient item yeah. in terms of just getting the full 150 burst kill. That's just immense. And, uh, wow. So they avoid that death. It makes the score 5 to 7. You'll keep in mind with the top scoreboard that the two, that two of LGD's kills are neutral creep kills mm -hmm. that were happened early in the game intentionally by Vici. So you can't really count that. And... It is still going to be uh, a pretty even net worth for the moment, but maybe he's going to try to change that with all these ancients that he's stacked up and farming with the quill spray back to back. All right, it's time for our midterm assessment. Uh, is uh, FY's Mirana doing enough? Uh, that's, I mean, enough. It, it's space creation for how there's there's enough movement from FY Mirana. As far as putting them in a commanding position in the game, there's not enough. It's it's still got to be. Uh, about Super's blink initiation more so than anything else. They, they've gotten through the laning phase okay. But sometimes you see Shadow Demon Rana just dominate the laning phase. That has not happened here. So, as it is, we're kind of at an even stage Arrow. in the game. FY has oh, done some good work. <laughs> oh, that magnetic personality. <laughs> uh. Like, for example, the kills on Gyrocopter have been huge, and FY has facilitated that pretty much both times. That said, I, I don't think that like they're in a commanding position this game, and it's going to be on like super to, to change that. So right now they're up against Xiao Wei's Blink Dagger. Uh, the Bristleback just got his Vanguard and then some with a massive stack on the Ancients and a decent stack in the Radiant Jungle. And yeah, I really feel like they're going to have a hard time bringing him down. Tornado's a good option for now, but eventually he'll go BKB, not only against the Brewmaster, but also the Peel Mana Burn. He just wants to yeah. stay in the fight and keep Quill Spraying. I think Crimson God should come first, though. I think that thing, yeah, sure. that thing yeah. makes you immortal. 
against PL. I think you, there's no way. I think I don't. I'm not sure if you can purge the buff away. Uh, but Crimson God's buff really makes you uh, take no damage from illusions because, uh, yeah. And now we're gonna have some problems. The soul, the soul catcher has been used on the neutral camp. They are smoking up. Yao is gonna start with this rocket flare. He will see them immediately. Blink strike will come onto super, and there we go. The epicenter will take him out. Brewmaster, no chance to react at all. And FY will leap away. Uh, or rather, he doesn't leap away. Oh, Xiao A getting caught out. There's a buyback here from the Brewmaster. He wants some, and arrow will fly. The director gets himself caught. Never oh, mind. Blink yeah. dagger. No poison. Oh man, if only he had the poison there. But now the clockwork. He will be caught out here. He will be stunned by that Brewmaster split. And they're gonna get slowed down by the call down. So they will pick up a Yao sacrifice. Uh, level 1 vacuum, Soul Catcher as well. They pick him off. And it looks like Ice 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 actually scores another kill. They'll get a tornado as well onto the Brewmaster. Very long duration here, but Siler is waiting to respond if they go in hard. Okay, they're going in. There's the split up. The Lightning Storm will slow things down. I'm not sure, Bristlebacks, who you want. The arrow. Ooh, Siler. Nearly. And maybe he's just gonna go straight for the BKB. At this oh. point, he's just like, screw it, if I can keep fighting against all these spells and potentially against the Diffuser Blade, then I'm happy to. And they can actually start oh, looking to push with the respawns time. coming out. I mean, it's unfortunate they won't have the epicenter for it, but a Blink Burrow Strike should suffice since there is no split, there is no wild replica, not for over 50 seconds. Yeah, well, Sila, he's uh, actually pretty thin uh, in terms of farm here. So let me yeah. get that. 800 gold, the drums, Aquila. He's got nice stats all around, but he doesn't have any real oomph or any BKB protection. Alright, lots of iron shells in play. The arrow could be huge here, and they're gonna yeah. go in for the side gank. Here we go. Oh, Barrow Strike, the director starts things off. It's a showtime, and Yao hooks on in onto Ice Ice Ice. They trap him in. This is a big trap to get. They will pick up Ice Ice Ice. He mechs up. He will die, maybe. Yep, he will. Lightning Storm will secure that. And now Xiao A coming in once again, finds Super, he will Barrel Strike to start, but it looks like this fight is far from over, as the teams all wrap on in, they're gonna try and deploy a homing missile onto Super, it would've been big, but he has an Invis rune, so I think they don't want to commit uh, too much to that and waste the momentum. So uh, again, another bad fight going for Vici, very quick reflexes there from Xiao A, and you can see all the spells being thrown out. It's a 900 yeah. gold swing. Yeah, we reacted to that situation pretty well with those Hook and Cogs spreading it out so they couldn't really focus a single target. And the, despite all the heroes being right in that small juncture, the arrow just kind of goes right down the middle and doesn't hit anybody. So that was uh, rather unfortunate for FY here. Now they're losing the tower. Um, the ultimate is back up for Ice Ice Ice, but that's pretty much all they have going for them right now. I, I think Vici should not be fighting now. They're really far behind. Uh, they should be trying to go for... Uh, split push now, you know, let the Phantom Lancer get some farm up and mm -hmm. push around the split map. push though is oh, because a two down. Oh, Dopo, ow. Dopo away, Dopo, hey, wait, he'll split, alright, he'll be surviving and he gets into the trees, very lucky there, and the wall from Ice 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 is perfect! They'll send Yao into the sky, will they dispel him to kill him off? No, yeah, they'll dispel him, they'll kill him off, there's a lance, the last hit will fly, and now they get one kill. They're looking for that Bristleback, but it's really impossible to kill that Bristleback at this point. Ice 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 is gonna get caught out, he wants another wall replica. Uh, but not gonna get it, and maybe he's just gonna tank through everything. The Vanguard itself, no need for Crimson Guard, it's overdoing it. It's just the Vanguard itself, or it nullifies most of the PL's extra damage. Mm -hmm. The problem is they spent two, three ultimates even, on a single Clockwork kill. Like, that actually, I mean, it's good for Vici, but they need their ultimates to make a bigger impact this game, and it's just not happening. I mean, they'll take what they can get, but now they're definitely in farming and split pushing uh, mode, and uh, like I was saying, I don't really know what they can actually split push considering the tier 1 tower is down bottom and top. You're really just kind of farming waves occasionally, but putting yourself at risk to Clockwork ganks. That's... Uh, yeah, I guess it's true. But Clockwork can't catch PL though. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. But now that it's yeah, that's online, not I guess... Issue, I, I think the Blink Burrow Strike follow through is what you're worried about after mm -hmm. that. Like Blink, uh, Cl Clockwork, and the Sand King. But we're gonna see Sand King break smoke. He goes for the mid play, goes onto Ice Ice Ice, no mana for the mechanism, and he will go down. Yeah, uh, this is looking really bad. It might look to be a 3 0 kind of way, the way things are going. Fenrir falling as well, and VG, the Titans, uh, you know, you could say they're the Titans of China. Uh, getting brought down. LGD. That brand is just all about Xiao Eight. This team is uh, extremely t uh, extremely good at what they do and with their uh, good leadership uh, to follow that. It's just looking to be flawless execution. Sila really being Magneto this game uh, with all those arrow catches, but... VG Gaming... Uh, yeah, like this, oh, like you said, this Murano. Why? No! Oh. The leap is gonna give him some distance, but it's not gonna be enough against the Viscous Nasal Goo. Gonna get a TP in, but it's too late. 
he's dead. That arrow, that, that positioning, it's just... I, I don't know. I, I feel like they're kind of on tilt at this point. They're trying to figure out what went wrong, and I don't know if they have the mindset that gets them back into this game. I mean, they have the heroes. They have some good mid to late game in terms of their draft, but right now they're already down so many kills, and they are really not playing like they're they're moving in a winning direction. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Ice 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 did say in an interview that he doesn't want to be the sensor of attraction going into TI, so... Oh, this is one of the I biggest. I don't think this is a tactical loss, dude. This, this is, still is uh, a lot of this money. is one of the biggest tournaments before TI, so uh, possible tactical loss going in here. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they are they are looking to be on tilt. Um, jokes aside, but yeah, LGD are definitely gonna get a lot of attention. I mean, taking out VG three O is definitely gonna get the eyebrows raised for all those Western teams. And oh man, Shaoi's gonna find how, and. Uh, We'll see here. Oh, that's a sound team in the start. There'll be a narrow, perfect one as well. They get a freebie here. Clock will go down. So that's a good kill. They get one. The Lance yeah, will go up. A really Shiva. good flanking position, though. The Invis rune is going to dispel, but if they keep on focusing and they ignore his potential position, then no, he that might be okay. a Oh, Brumas is split. They're going in. It's FBKB. Lance. Oh, that's a dead Syla. We might have called this too Epi early. Center. Syla going down to spin on last strike. Epicenter will land on Fenrir, but an instant stun here from FY. He carries the game, and Xiao Aid gets mauled by Brulings. And no, oh, MMY. He doesn't have to. Doesn't have that. Uh, doesn't have that split just yet. Maybe getting caught out here. Chao is gonna fall. How will throw out the lands, but they just can't take down this red boss. Not now. How needs a couple more items before he can do that. Maybe with Soulcatcher, they can do something about this. There are four stacks. There's an arrow in the face though. Fy with the plays. Could have given that kill. Maybe Phantom Lance is gonna blink away with his uh, doppelganger. He drops a lance forward. He's gonna slow down maybe, but how is dropping so low? One more kill spray will take him out. No, it was in the fog. Oh, he tries to turn around for that level one, uh, for that lance, but it's only a second short. And maybe might be the bane uh, for VG's existence here. I mean, that PL pick into the Bristleback might have been a uh, mistake. Well, uh, the Bristleback was the last pick, man. It's, was it? It's, uh, no, the PL was yeah, the last yeah, pick. Maybe he picked that up as the last pick. Okay. So maybe not banning it, sure, but. Uh, just the fact is, they did not expect, uh, with the fact that the offlane was already covered, with the phase one clockwork pickup, the gyrocopter as well, they felt the cores were pretty under wraps, they did not suspect a possible Brid uh, mid-bristle, and they did last pick that, so now maybe he's just on a tear here, doing so much work, uh, 5-1-7, 113 CS, he is top of the net worth by far, I mean, you compare his net worth to that of the Phantom Lancers, and you're just so sad for Mr. Howe. I mean, that's 3.5k in favor of the Bristol I, I honestly Mac think PL was last pick, though, but I, I remember it cr uh, correctly because I was saying, I was, I was hyping yeah, up Anti-Mage. Yeah, I was hyping up Anti-Mage, and then I saw Bristleback, and I'm like, okay, it's not so good a pick now. Uh, that's okay. how I remember it, yeah. But yeah, it, regardless, uh, there weren't a lot of heroes left that could deal with Bristleback that well, unless they wanted to go for a non-carry lineup and go for Bristleback, uh, I mean, Timbersaw. I think Timbersaw might have been good for them this game. Ice 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 plays a mean Bristleback, uh, Timbersaw. You don't first pick that though. I wanted to find a first pick option for <laughs> their draft here when they when the bands came out the way they did with the Shadow Fiend and the Storm Spirit taken off the field, so they go into the Dark Seer. That's, a, that's your best all around option, I think. Like, you could go Shadow Demon opener and kind of play it out, play the field a little bit, but your, your Timbersaw phase one, the last time they picked that, it did absolutely nothing in the summit, so. It's, yeah. a, it's oh, a tough pick. How? How? Oh, the chain stun. He needs to double out, but he's not going to get the oh, chance. Will? Oh, okay, never mind. Almost makes the play, but... The wards are this crazy in this game. Yeah. This is, this is a really tough game for How and for Vichy Gaming as a whole. Alright, the Vlad's pick up here for the Brewmaster. He does have a haste. They could make this game. Um, they could still try and turn it around a little bit. Ice 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 is doing his best to try and split push this, but it's a Sand King. It really ruins his day. And the hook shot will follow. No, it hooks onto the Sand King, but that's gonna be enough. They vac them out. Maybe vac them out. Vac them back. Maybe back them back, yeah. Surge ready in one second. The arrow will fly, will cut them off. The Sand King does have Barrel Strike though. They're gonna get him. Are they gonna get him? Yes, they will. And the Brewmaster's haste will not be enough here. Shell 8 still chasing. The FY will leap to the low ground. And this game is looking worse and worse. Shell 8 just really capitalizing on these mistakes. VG, I, I think Ice 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 had to do that. He had to pull them back, otherwise, um, they could have gone for a tier 3 push or even Roshan. Right now, he trades his life for a bit of space and time. And I think it's, uh, it was the best option for him. 
Yeah, it's still a, a tough position to be in right now. I mean, uh, the Sand King is just so good at punishing positioning errors and locking you in place, locking into unfortunate mistakes. He did a lot of damage in that top lane fight with the Epicenter. He's been controlling this really well. The MOI is getting farmed as well. He doesn't have his Arcane Boots yet, but he does have uh, the mechanism complete. So the mana will be an issue, but since he's not even running any Pulse Nova, he still should be able to get the mech off in the fights if he manages it well. And then once he gets the Guardian Greaves, he'll be able to use the Pulse Nova and the Greaves really well. Yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see how well he can uh, pull off the next team fight. I mean, ultimately, it might be up to him to with the Wall of Replica, but Gyrocopter and Bristleback aren't good clones. So it's uh, it's kind of sad because uh, even if he gets the Wall of Replica across, the clones of Bristleback and Gyrocopter do not output as much damage as you would a Morphling or a. Phantom Lance, uh, Phantom Lancer, or a PA. Mm -hmm. Smoke up. Tough spot to be in. We're gonna see the smoke play come through from LGD. If they can just pick off one hero outside the base, then they pretty much just get themselves a, a free high ground. But in this case, it looks like Vici are aware of the threat. They're gonna go ahead and stick together in a safe position. It's gonna be LGD to move for the pit. Yep, that's gonna be the Roshan attempt, uh, and. It it should be a guaranteed kill here. I don't think uh, Vici want to risk it because if they risk it and fail, it's pretty much GG. With all mm -hmm. their tier 2s down, I, it'll be straight to base uh, after this. So VG Gaming, they cannot afford to make any more mistakes. Their, their game plan right now should be to split push and I think that's what they're doing right. FY uh, will try and scout out with an arrow. It's a haste rune as well. Fly and it will just uh, scoot past them. But Xiao has been playing an amazing Sand King. Very versatile player. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, in the support role, you certainly have to kind of have a mastery of all those different options, the, the single target initiators, the AoE counter initiators, and that kind of thing. And he definitely has shown that he has a, a penchant for all of it. I mean, his Tidehunter has been amazing in the offlane role, so Saint King kind of has some similar jump potential with the Burrow Strike and with the AoE uh, team fight mm -hmm. ultimate. So. I think that, just generally speaking, he's an experienced player that has a, a wide array of heroes to work with, and this ju this has just worked so well. It started off with a great first blood. I mean, the the boots first movement, uh, just Isis is making one mistake, and he's been able to do a lot with that, even though his jungle was contested a little bit. Yep, the Sand King is always going to be a major threat. Without any bounty hunter interference, the Sand King will always be uh, a really tough thing to deal with because. He just stacks up in something uh, in a camp safe like this place, especially for Radiant at this point. It's such a safe spot for him to farm any kind of uh, big stacks without interference. And short of a bounty hunter, it is very hard to disrupt this farm. And even so, even running into the enemy jungle so early on in the game risks a lot of retaliation. So yeah, thanking. Mm -hmm. That instant stun has been really effective so far. I was worried they didn't have enough lockdown to start off on the how because. Uh, Last strike is in the best stun. Hook shot is still easily avoided from the PL uh, after that one second. So, mm -hmm. Sanking has really been on point. Yeah, but Yao's been there too. I mean, not necessarily against the PL, but now going in on ice, ice, ice. Easy cogs. A four staff out though, and they'll actually miss the opportunity to force uh, on top of him. Instead, it'll be the burrow strike to lock Ooh. him in, but he gets a great vacuum, and he's just gonna TP away. He's not clear. The damage. Oh, oh, they do get the damage the though. Oh, MMY making uh, it, but uh, the Quill Spray is doing a lot of work too. That was a very close call and some shenanigans with the Force Death. Yeah, uh, he's making space, I guess, uh, but I'm not sure how much space he can no, continue no, that to is, make. I mean, they're right where they want to be. They want to push down mid anyway, so I, don't, yeah. I see zero space created with that. Well, at least they're not hunting your PL, I guess. But uh, Ice 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 is just playing risky right now. He needs to he needs to try and make as much uh, time for his PL to get the farm. I think the PL... Do you see the PL actually winning late game though with the huge amount of items? He's going BKB now. Six slot maybe, but right now not. He's just so far behind. It doesn't even seem like they'll get the chance. It all comes down to this fight here. Darkseer coming back up and with the wall. Right? It's a level 1 wall at level 11, unfortunately, but maybe they can just pull, uh, get some good damage. I mean, just nuking them down initially and... Uh, at least forcing them out of the base. They're gonna kind of fall back on the Isis Isis respawn, leaving the tier 3 with some chip damage. Well, the Aegis has two more minutes left on his expiry date, so uh, still has a little bit of time to farm, push the waves nearer to the enemy towers before going for the base push. Uh, maybe Sanjin Yasha, Vanguard, BKB, pretty much untouchable at this point. And uh, Xiao 8. 
for stuff and Blink Dagger. A lot of mobility, a lot of reach. So long they see you, they can actually pick you off very easily. So, have to be very careful about this. Yeah, Jawai has a gem of true sight, and he's using that here on the offensive. If V2 take one fight, they can definitely look to bring this back by taking the gem, taking all that mm -hmm. net worth back. But it's all about the question of how do they win that fight. And right now, the PL's farm is just insubstantial. Uh, getting the BKB is his next thing, but that's not going to come out before they start pushing high ground. And Brood, oh, never mind. Here comes Ice 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 getting caught out again. There is going to be a save here from the disruption. He'll run away in time. Super goes in for a ton of clap, splits into three. That's a power back from Darks here, but all the Broodlings are destroyed here. Immediately removed. No more extra uh, utility coming out from the Broodmaster Spirits, and they are going to jump forward. The buyback from Ice 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 is not going to matter here. The arrow will fly. It will land on nobody. Uh, it will avoid the arrow there, and no, maybe. Still has their Aegis intact. About a minute more, they all pop the wall, try and stall it out. They really can't afford to fight into that Aegis. They have to stall out as much as possible. But Diffusal Blade is complete here for how? So he can start chipping away maybe his mana. And I think maybe he really wants to die here, but I don't think anyone can kill him. Yeah, I don't I don't know. At this point, it just doesn't feel like the Vici gaming we saw yesterday. Like they are purely on the defensive. They are not finding really any opportunity to hunt. You think about the Fenrir's Shadow Demon, a hero that's actually first banned. Uh, for some teams against Vici Gaming, but he's really not really accomplished much. I mean, the Demonic Purge is nice. Gyrocopter has limited attack range. Bristleback uh -oh. likes to be close in proximity, so Purge brings utility, and his disruptions, a couple of them have been good, but as a whole, it's just, just not Vici Gaming's day, it seems, because they are just getting They're torn get apart. Nope. And without yeah. the... Oh, I mean, they have the Glyph still. They've been holding on to that for some time, but it's still... Mm -hmm. It's just such a difficult position to hold without the wall replica for 45 damage. seconds. Oh man, maybe if the double damage. Maybe he pops it now. Oh, the first no, right. BKB first. You BKB and then you double damage so it doesn't dispel it, mm -hmm. and then he can have it for the fight. Yeah. Or maybe just use it to a hail of the tower. Uh, you'll get you'll get defusal immediately. You can purge it off if it's not BKB. That's true. Yeah. But how he could be in danger here? He's he's edging very close to the base, and a blink barrel strike could just end the game right there. He has to be very careful. Brewmaster, the problem with Brewmaster is he doesn't do any kind of uh, real damage if he's behind. He only has that stall potential with the stun and the spins. It helps divide the fight. But uh, Brewmaster that's behind doesn't do a lot of damage. Just Thunderclap and a bunch of weak spirits that get destroyed by Gyrocopter very quickly. Yeah, maybe his rune actually doesn't matter at all because they've got the Wind Panda Purge, they've got Demonic Purge, and they've got Defusal Blade. But we'll see them go in and force, force the issue oh, anyways. Oh, like, no. Yeah, great stun off on Fenrir. Oh, what an initiation. The vacuum missing completely as well. Maybe it's just now going to wall free. There is no wall potential. The wall will land on the Gyrocopter, but the Gyrocopter doesn't do any damage normally as an illusion. And maybe just tanking through everything, but the spirits are actually chasing them out as well as the Phantom Lancer Illusions. Look at that illusion just chasing over and Syla. They will be forced out of base for now. The big KB has been popped. No one has lost their lives just yet. The disruption was on point from Spirit, um, Shadow Demon, and he will stay alive for just a little bit more. But if they lose this team fight, I think it's 3-0 here. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it comes down to this last one. No ulti is available for the side Vici Gaming. They do have a Glimmer Cape BKB. on F Light. He's got a good flank. He needs a huge arrow, and they just need to pick off and single out somebody that doesn't have a BKB. Both on cooldown, maybe in Silar. They might be Sila. able to do an damage. Need to go for Silar. Yeah, obviously. If you get the opportunity, you take it, but I think he's going to stay back. Yeah, Alright, getting the sentry ward here. Yeah, we'll have that missile flying in, the lances will fly out, burn away maybe his mana. I think that's going to be very important as well. Prevent him from using too many of those quills charges. If you drop him down low enough, the PL still playing risky here. Xiao A, biding time, patience from him. As an arrow to fire, and there will be a BKB. It's recharged here, so they're ready to go back in. Round two now, the barrel strike onto how This could be game ending, but good them away. We'll split him up, and now the Brewmaster jumps in. He doesn't have his ultimate here. He's gonna get pummeled down. Does he have buyback? Yes, he does. He's coming back. He has to buy back into this. This is the end of the game if he doesn't go for it. And is he gonna buy back though? He's still waiting. I think he's waiting to see well, if his ultimate will get way, coming up there. Oh, gonna get caught, really caught up. Oh, bad for stuff. Well, defensively disrupt, but still Lance. they're looking to turn it. Monster kill from Bristleback, it could be GG soon, how? Running out of mana, Syla just tanking through everything, maybe actually tanking through everything, Syla just avoiding all that damage, Bristleback doing everything for him, good vacuum though, nothing to follow up, MMY will fall, the lines, that's the first casualty here for LGD, and how just trying to do his best here, he's at half health, he pops the BKB, he tries to spawn as many illusions as possible, but a return, Barrel Strike here from Xiao8 could end the game, but they do lose the melee racks all the same, they're currently the catapult sword to that, and... 
VG, although they held the game a little bit, they didn't hold the racks and they only get a less track in return. This game is looking more and more bleak here for uh, VG, but for the sake of game three, they'll have to push on. Yeah, they'll try to do what they can. I mean, one racks is such a huge disadvantage in this game because not only were they already really behind in terms of net worth and experience, and of course the racks give you a huge boost in gold if you're the, the team that takes them down, but now they're going to be pressured in the lane constantly, and that's going to be where ISSI spends a lot of time ion shelling against the super creeps. But uh, still, I mean, they'll try to pull through. They'll try to see what they can build up with this Brewmaster. I, I don't think he has to have the BKB to get a good split off, but it's safe. It's just, it's, it, he pretty much has to make do with what he has, because that buyback sets him so far behind. The problem now is uh, Vici doesn't have any kind of uh, follow-up. I mean, Ice 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 has been getting some big vac into walls, but there's no follow-up. If there was an Earthshaker, if there was a Magnus to capitalize off it, if there was a Cleave, it would have done really good. I mean, uh, even a Sven Stormhammer into Ultimate here would have been huge in all those vacuums that Ice 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 pulled off. I think this is a drafting error uh, to pick that PL. Yeah, I mean, that we talked about a lot of different options, and PL was at the bottom of the list of, like, four or five heroes, and I, I think that that's kind of shown here. It's The hero illusion doesn't get show the strength. The hero's not all about illusions anymore. It's it's much better to pick it here than it would have been in PL's, like, cancer stage, where he was only about illusions. Split but pushing. even still, it's it's a position where Vici Gaming are not in a advancing position, even as the game goes longer. But it's not going to last much longer at this rate. Siler's got Arrow. his BKB and Butterfly oh, up, and they're looking to fight. Yeah. This uh, Bristleback just uses BKB casually to avoid getting stunned there. I actually think if he just stood there and tanked the, tanked the arrow, he would have won the fight because he would have baited VG into a fight they could not win. I don't, sure. I don't see I them killing him, though. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's almost impossible. Like right now, he's just so tanky. He's got so much sustainability. He's got a lot of backup. Play the big deal. thing I think is the last rock having the mechanism. If that mech wasn't there, then maybe there's a chance. But right now, he's just got so much effective HP. The passive is doing amazing wonders for him. There's nothing breaking it right now. No ags on Shadow Demon. No Silver Edge on anyone. And that's the least of their worries, honestly. They, st I think the biggest problem they're up against is they have no counter to the Butterfly on Silar. He's going to be evading a third of their strikes, and he's just going to shrug off everything they throw at him. They yeah. don't have that much magic damage. Yeah, the PL really can't afford this right now. Oh, they go in, though. Trying to get the jump, but it's only on the Bristleback. Oh, no, this is a bad time to split. Why would you split now? Could've They're just... desperate. This is like they're all in. Oh, he fills the dispel as well. The arrow's going to miss completely, and this is just tilt all around. This is the last ditch attempt. They're going in. It might be the GG after this if they fail. The barrel strike will catch Fenrir. And the vacuum in once again. Big from Ice Ice Ice. The disruption to follow. More illusions here off the Bristleback. It's not going to be enough. Gyrocopter has taken out the PL. There is no more PL in this fight. He doesn't have buyback. VG on their last legs. The barrel strike will come. And it's a GG. Congratulations to LGD. They take down VG Gaming 3-0 in I League. Scoring themselves 1.4 million running B. It's a lot of money. And uh, in Chinese, 1.3 million, 200,000 US dollars at 1.3 million Chinese dollars, which is running B. And it's about 50% of the prize pool. It's a huge win. Another Laurel in uh, Xiao Eight's uh, collection. And he's definitely going to be very happy about that. Merit Life has done this guy good, man. Man, he's just incredible. The way they were able to play around Vici Gaming here, uh, I feel like there were a few drafting errors this match in general, but still, I really think it's about teamfight execution coming in from LGD. Like, that second game, I actually think that LGD had a draft disadvantage, but they still prevailed because they were able to just pull through with some really good fights at the perfect timings. And this fight, uh, this time, they just pressed their advantage. They knew when they were up. They were able to do a lot with it. And while they weathered the storm of the FY Fenrir laning stage, the Shadow Demon Rana movement, uh, they were able to pull forward with their superior core heroes in the mid game, and here we are, 35 minutes in. They take the third game, they wipe out Vici Gaming, and they don't even spill blood. They actually just keep going, pushing forward, going for the win, and they take it here convincingly. That was just incredible to watch. Yeah, Vici uh, tilting all the way. I mean, ev even with that GG, didn't see the normal, usual congratulations. They must have been really frustrated at the game. And uh, hopefully they get their uh, mindset for TI. They still have a lot of tournaments. I remember Ice 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 uh, complaining about a long string of uh, tournaments to get to and all the jet lag that will be affecting them. So uh, they have a little bit of a little bit of time to work things out before TI and a couple of tournaments in between. 
But LGD, they can go away from this game feeling really proud for themselves and a uh, good morale boost coming into TI, but they do paint a big target on themselves, I think. Yeah, they're going to be definitely people that res that are respected. They're going to be good having opponents gunning for them, and LGD in general is going to have to watch their backs a little bit. But, I mean, this is a big boost of confidence. This is them knowing that they can work well in this patch and that they can take on any of the Tier 1 teams at this point. Because I mean, Vici performed very well in international tournaments, and although LGD did not go all the way, they still made top four in the Summit. They still take Vici Gaming down here, who were the third place team. Mm -hmm. Like they all, they're gonna be examining the West because they've got the East pretty well down pat, I'd say. Yeah, and the West can actually take away uh, a lot from these games because they see how oh, yeah. LGD understands VJ, and then they say, "All right, we're gonna use a similar strategy and punish your gyro picking." And uh, you well, know, it, it could really change the whole um, Chinese scene, uh, well, the whole Chinese uh, tankiness in terms of. Uh, their ability to hold their own, but uh, the Chinese strategies might be revealed here at the end of this grand final. We'll see if uh, any West Western teams uh, exploit these. And well, I'm really glad that LGD did it, but I'm kind of sad it was a 3-0. Uh, so, mm -hmm. any closing thoughts? I, I don't think this is the last of Vici or anything like that. People look at this and they overrate and say, "Oh my gosh, these guys are chumps now. They have suddenly lost all their skill. They, this is like yeah. Space Jam. They they suddenly are no longer the the NBA Space players. Jam. Now these guys are still uh, huge players with huge potential. They had a really off day. They had a few drafting errors they need to work on, and in general, they need to cross-examine this game and bounce back from it. But I still think that they're going to be one of the big players in TI and. I am looking forward to it. This was still overall uh, a great match. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. didn't go the distance, but I think that we so saw a strong showing from both teams. And although Vici Gaming weren't at their strongest, we know what they can do. So LGD looking incredible right now. Vici Gaming still uh, as good as ever, just did not show that in this match here. All right, with that, um, I think Super should really look towards getting a compendium. And uh, we wrap it up. LGD 3-0. Congratulations to them once again. It's uh, about 200,000 US dollars uh, in prize money. 50% of that prize pool of iLeague going to them. And you can still pick it up. If you miss any of the VODs, you want to pick up a ticket in the store. It does come with a sweet, sweet Medusa sweat. I promise I have it. I bought it myself. And uh, you can go purchase it up. And with that, I thank you guys on behalf of Beyond the Summit. Remember to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Beyond the Summit. And remember to follow me and my co-caster as well. I'm Lysander Zenora. He's Blaze Casting. Run a, uh, our Twitter handles on the top right corner. If you want to give us your support, your shoutouts, your feedback, your, you know, your criticism, you can let us know. And be nice. And we'll be casting more games in the future. Uh, so look out for us. And we're glad to have brought you this coverage of iLeague Season 3. Looking forward to Season 4 and of course TI in the future. And with that, we'll end this broadcast. Thank you guys for watching. Much love and kappa.